Welcome to part number 11 of Need for Speed Underground 2. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're doing all the sponsor races for our contract requirements, and we're going to begin by doing the circuit race on our sponsor. I don't remember who I signed with. I think it's I with Toyo? I could be wrong. But I think that's who I remember signing with. So yeah, back here in the city center, and I don't know why the arrow is telling me to go that way, when I can just go straight ahead and make a left turn right here. <laughs> you had a crazy drag setup for your 240 back then? <laughs> That's cool. Welcome to Ride My Pimp, the only program to does piggyback races on pimps. <laughs> okay, I'm not too surprised, Dan. And here we go. So we're racing against a Celica, an MX-5, and a Golf. But everyone knows that my 240 is the best looking car out here. Because I like disgusting Orion trash, that's why. Dude, I, I seriously can't wait till I get out of the second stage because I'm... Honestly, even though I purposely made this car as hideous as possible, I'm tired of looking at it already. <laughs> but then again, I'm probably not even going to make it look any better. I'm probably going to make it just look worse because the later body kits get even more ridiculous. <laughs> I know, right, Arthur? I think it's the fact that it was like, like what Pleb King said, it was like one of the, it was the last body kit that you could choose, and by association you just automatically assume that the last of everything is the best. Like, it cracks me up how in Underground 1 you had Sniper and Ace as the only level 1 body kits you could get, and then in this game, they already just were not holding back with the ridiculousness of the body kits. Like, they gave you Stag for some cars, which Stag looks okay on some, but really dumb on others, and then Orion is just, oh, Jesus. Like, it doesn't even need an explanation on how, why it's bad. Oh, dude, the Valhalla kit, dude, that's... Valhalla, this was 16 when it came out. Oh, damn, so it's been a while for you. Well, it's been a while for all of us. I was... Uh, 10? 11? Somewhere around there. It's 2004, right? Well, no, I w if it was 2004, I was 9. I was 9 years old when this game came out. Now, yeah, dude, Valhalla is the most... Okay, it's either Valhalla or Stingray that has the vote for the ugliest body kits in the entire game. You were 10 when this game came out. Oh, so you're a year older than me. Okay. Oh, damn, you were born in 2004. Damn, so you were born when this game came out then. Damn, my car only goes 160, but still fast enough to beat all the other cars. Dan, Charles, and Rowena. But yeah, I... I will have one car... <laughs> born a legend for NFS, he was. You're also eating dirt when this game came out. Oh, you're born in July. Oh, cool. But yeah, I promise you guys that I will have two cars in in my um, inventory that will be... Um, one will have all Stingray body kits, and then the other one's going to have all Valhalla. I promise you guys that. <laughs> you miss painting all your cars pink? Well, I don't plan on painting any of my cars pink. In Most Wanted, I plan on painting my Punto pink. That's really about it.
Dude, that nitrous goes by so quickly. And I have a huge lead over the other guys. It's like what Rhino GT4 said in his LP. It's like, when you have no performance parts, the game is ridiculously hard. When you have all the performance parts available, it's kind of easy. Except for URL races. URL races can kiss my ass with the rubber banding. Hey, what's up, Let's Hit 5? How's it going? When you were 10, you'd rather die than paint any of your cars pink? Oh my god. <laughs> That's a bit extreme, noob. Alright. So, since we're in the area, let's go ahead and do this special event. Because I don't really have... I don't... Okay. The controls are kind of weird when you're navigating the map, honestly, with an Xbox controller on PC. Because you have to hit, like, X in order to activate the GPS. It's really weird. Kind of reminds me of Metal Gear on the NES, where, like, when you're in the options menu, like, the controls kind of swap sometimes. But, yeah. I figured, you know what? Like... If I do just a whole segment on magazine shoots, it's going to be like a three minute video and it really won't be worth having a standalone video for that. So I figured, you know what, might as well throw in a couple of magazine shoots per uh, per recording. So like this one, for example, this photographer's not going to wait around all night. You got two minutes to get to his location before he takes off. And he's located in Beacon Hill. So yeah, you have to hit X in order to activate the GPS and then you have to hit A to accept yes or no but see where the confusion comes in is that you think you hit A but no like your your mind is set on hitting X again because that's what you needed to hit in order to get to that uh, menu to begin with we're now on second <laughs> oh no, we made it you just have to go through the little S section here and we're good. Maybe going the other way might be faster, but we have plenty of time. Power sliding would only be worth it if you have level 2 or 3 nitrous, because level 1... Uh, it, it's not even worth trying to get like drift scores or anything on the street. You couldn't get closer if you were under the hood. You scored the cover of Sport Compact car. My car's not even a Sport Compact. Jesus Christ. <laughs> mind-blowing performance tuning. Yeah, mind-blowing is is definitely the right term for my car. It's mind-blowing how fucking ugly it is. All right, what's the next sponsor race? Sprint race. Okay, street cross? Okay, street cross is closer, so we're going to do the street cross race instead. <laughs> that girl. <laughs> Best magazine. You know, and for some reason, I had an obsession with flames on all my cars as a kid. I don't know why. Like, I, I guess I thought flames... Ignore the ugly car. Here's an attractive lady. Um, I, I guess I always thought flames made your car look awesome. So yeah, here's the drift track. I mean the street cross track that we're racing on. No nitrous here as usual for street cross races. And away we go. Gotta be aggressive here. Like that. Alright, so far so good. Nice aggressive move in the beginning. Gaia X is back. Oh yeah, the horrible translation in Spanish. <laughs> You know, if I was the programmer for the for the Spanish version of the game, my horrible Spanish would probably come out, and I probably would be like, "Oh, Street X, Calle X, nah, that works."
See, the sponsors are loving me for all the domination that I'm doing in these races right now. <laughs> Guy at Hecky. <laughs> you thought the flames looked better too? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess when we're younger, you know, we we just think like, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like when, I, I don't know how to explain it really. It, it's, I, I guess we think more, I, I think we, we think more is better. So we have to plaster the car with a bunch of stickers and stuff. And yeah, sometimes less is more when it comes to designs and whatnot. I guess that's like the best thing I can explain. All right, so sprint race. That's the last sponsor obligation, and it's all the way back at the city center. Hey, trap, how's it going? Welcome to the stream, my friend, and to the YouTube video that I'm recording right now. But if you just plaster way too much stuff, hey, thank you, trap. I appreciate it. Where can you get the game? The store. I don't know. Online. But yeah, anyways, um, I, I think if you just plaster like a bunch of shit on the car, then it doesn't really look that good. Unless you do it right. Sometimes like crazy customizations like the stuff West Coast Customs do is pretty cool. Like I was at Comic-Con this year in San Diego and um, Xbox were out there with the PUBG, um, the PUBG Volkswagen bus. And it was... It looked just like a PUBG, like like a VW bu uh, bus in PUBG, and it was cool because inside they had a bunch of Xboxes and a bunch of screens, but it made sense. It was awesome. Over the top works with kids, I think means, or over the top works with kids, I think. I mean, look at Fortnite and most toys, brightly colored, very wacky designs and all. That's true. Hey, ABX, how's it going? Welcome to the stream slash video. But yeah, I think that is true. I'm just really bad at explaining stuff. That's it. <laughs> oh, we're going the opposite side of the freeway. I accidentally downshifted, but thankfully the transmission is so bad that I could have caught myself and shifted back up. Yeah, I mean, mainly that's why, ma mainly that's why the um, Fast and Furious movies really put the whole like import tuner scene on the map, you know, and like all these crazy customizations. I mean, I doubt if the Fast and Furious had came out, I highly doubt the Underground series would have been a thing, to be honest. That might be saying a lot, but I think, I just think if the movies didn't come out, then we wouldn't even have these games. Hey, thanks for that, ABX. I appreciate it, dude. Absolutely losing, though. I mean, some people argue that, oh, they didn't have any competition, but no. You know, there were there were races in the past where there was only one manufacturer and, you know, a bunch of works teams. So I, I don't buy that at all, honestly. Where am I from? The United States, my friend. I'm from the West Coast. All right, so that's all the sponsor races. So the next thing we're going to be doing in the game is a bunch of regular stuff.